how what's up guys so today we're going to continue our series and i'm going to teach you how to create some camera traces okay um in the last video we only uh fire the weapons and in this one we're going to detect the hits um of the things that we are hitting okay so let's begin the first things we need is uh, to go to our inventory folder and on the interface that we added to our character, the BPI Interact, we're going to add a new function here to get the camera location from the player, okay? So right here, we're going to add a new function called get camera, and this is going to result to values, which will be the world's location, which will be a vector and also the forwards forwards vector okay which will also be a vector and that's it we can compile and save this and we can go to our character and feed these values so right here on the character we should now have that function on the interfaces so open it up and right here we're going to get the follow camera we're going to say get world location. And again, from here, we're going to say get forwards vector. And we're going to connect the values right here. Okay. This way we can get the values from our character. Now um, we can close this and we can go back to our weapon. So on the weapon system, the BP weapon that we created, uh, we're going to add our camera trace here. So the first thing we need is a reference to the actor that picked up this weapon so that we can call the get camera function. So here on the overlap event from the other actor, we're going to drag it right here and we're going to promote it to a variable. Okay, you can just move this here. Connect this, compile and save and that's it. Now over here on the fire function where we spawn this effects on the weapon, after this we're going to add our camera trace. So we're going to create a new function here called trace camera. Okay. And this is going to receive a value here, which will be the wrench. Uh, so weapon wrench like this, and it will be a float. Okay. Now um, over here, we want to say line trace by channel this one okay and line traces or or object traces are basically just um invisible objects that you can spawn and these objects will detect uh, a collision okay and once something collides with that invisible object we get a hit result okay now um over here we need the start location of our hit and the end location so where the hit will start and where it will end okay and to do that we need to get our player camera position so we're going to get the other actor that we set it before and we're going to say get camera like this <clears throat> move this here and right now the start location will be the world location of our camera okay and the end location we need to apply some things here first okay so uh, basically we want to multiply our forward vector by our range so uh, our forward vector will only tell us a direction but if we apply a range we can then uh, extend it into a certain location okay so from here we're going to say multiply and we're going to multiply this by our range, okay? Now, um, we want to join both of these locations so that we can obtain our uh, final end location. So here, we're going to say, um, no, sorry, from here, it's easier. We're going to say adds, and then we're going to connect this two like this, and we're going to send that to our end location, okay? So that's basically it. We can connect this here and um, we can set the debug type to four duration and the draw time to one so that we can see uh, basically what's going on here. So uh, we can compile and save this. 
And if we go back to the event graph and now add this function right here, uh, the weapon range, I'm going to set it to 10,000, but this is supposed to come from the weapons table, okay? But for now, I'm going to test this out. So if I hit play, and now I try to fire this weapon, you can see that I have a trace into the location that I'm aiming to, okay? That's basically what you want. Now, um, over here, we need to return some values um, so that we can use them in our next trace, okay? So, uh, right here, we're going to break the its results and we're going to expand this. And as you can see, we get all the values that are returned from this um, hit results, okay? Now, uh, we want to send back our location from our hit, but uh, sometimes if you um, aim at the sky, the location will be zero. So we need to check that and return our trace end instead, okay? So here, from the location, you're going to say equal. And like this, if this is uh, equal to zero, then right here, we're going to say select and call this node right here. We're going to connect this right here. And basically, if this is um, not zero, then we want to send back the location. But if it is, then we want to send back the trace and location. Okay. <clears throat> now over here, we can say return and connect this uh, over there like this. And now uh, the first thing we're going to send is this location. Okay, we can call it here location like this. Now, uh, some other things that you might want to export from here as well is the hit actor, the hit component and the bone name. Okay, so the hit actor, we can connect it right there, the hit components and the bone name. This is useful later for applying some physics and some things, okay? Now, the last thing we want to send back from here is the impulse that we are applying um, to our weapon so that we can later apply some physics as well. So right here, our impulse will be our forward vector uh, multiplied by our range. So we can just connect this right here. We can double click right here like this and then double click right here and everything should be organized okay that's basically it we've completed our trace camera okay so um right now if i hit play for example i can show you that um we can hit the locations right but this is coming from our camera so uh if i go right here and try to hit that object i shouldn't be able to hit it okay so we want to uh, have a solution for this. Uh, normally what we do is we use this main trace from the camera and then uh, from that location, we're going to apply a trace from our weapon into that location. This way, if I am here and the character has no visibility to that spot, then I won't be able to fire, okay? So let's do that. Um, let's go back to the event graph. And right here, we're going to um, add another uh, trace. So here we're going to create some function called trace socket. <clears throat> now we're going to grab our skeletal mesh and we're going to say get sockets location. Um, I'm not going to set any sockets. You could do it from the tip of the weapon. I'm just going to do it from the center of the weapon, okay? Now here we're going to add another line trace. So line trace um, by channel, this one, okay. And basically we're going to move this here, connect this here, and the start will be our socket location, okay, where our weapon is. And the end will come from the function itself, which we will send from the trace camera, okay. Now we can also uh, change this to for duration so that we can see the trace and change the trace color to blue, for example, okay? Now click okay. 
Now from here, we're going to break the its results and expand it right here. We're going to say return because we want to send some values. And basically we're going to send the impact points and the hits component, okay? And you will understand. Now we can go back to our event graph and right here we can add the trace socket and connect the end, which will be the location. Okay. And that's basically it. So if now we um, hit play, you should see when I shoot the weapon that I should have these two traces. Okay. Now, uh, if I go over here, you'll see that one of the traces changed to green, which means it's detecting uh, an overlap. Okay. As you can see, the red is eating there, but the blue one is eating the wall. Okay, this is what we want so that we can prevent the character from cheating. Okay, so uh, we can close this now. And what we're going to do here right now is just validate uh, that thing that we are uh, actually allowed to shoot. So um, from here, the hit components, we're going to say not equal. And we're going to compare both of these hit components. Okay. Now, uh, the second thing we want to compare is if this impact point is not equal exactly to zero. Okay. And uh, now these two, we're going to say and. So we're going to verify both of these things. And right here, we're going to say select. Okay, we're going to connect this here. And basically, um, if this is true, we are going to send our impact point from the second trace. Okay. And if this is false, we're going to send the original location for our main trace. Okay. Now, um, the last thing we're going to do here is just spawn some effects on the place that we are hitting. Okay. So here we can say spawn emitter at location and we can connect this here and the location will be the return value that we got from here and the emitter will be the um, impact metal medium that we uh, added before now all these values we should add them to um, basically variables so that they can come from the table I'm just showing you um, an example, okay? Now, um, if I compile and save and hit play, you will see um, that when I fire, I should have this nice effect, as you can see. And if I try to go over here, you can see that I can no longer hit that object. But if I go here, I can hit it, and here I cannot, okay? Now, uh, we can disable the line traces so that we don't get confused here. So on the trace camera, we're going to right here and set to none to draw debug type. And on the trace sockets, we're going to do the same thing, draw to none. And if I hit play now, you should be able to see that I cannot hit that spot. And if I come here, I can hit it, but not right here okay um now um the other things that we are going to do is basically add all of these things um to variables so that we can pass them from the table okay so over here the weapon range we can uh promote it to a variable which will be the weapon range now um <clears throat> the effects the impact effect we can promote it to a variable, which will be the impact uh, emitter. Okay, like this. And um, what's missing here? I think that's it. So we have all the variables that we need. Now uh, we need to go to our tables and add those variables. So on the inventory, categories, weapons, on the weapon struct, we're going to add those 
properties so right here it's going to be the uh range right which will be a float and it's going to be the um impact emitter which will be a particle system and we're going to set this to soft object reference okay like this now we can open um, our tables over here and on the pistol we can set the range to 10 thousands and we can copy this and do the same thing on this one okay we don't need to change the range now the impact emitter will also be the same for both the metal thing and here as well the metal thing okay this way the values will come from the table now let's go to the bp weapon and add that to our update values function so right here on the update values we should now have uh, those new properties so over here we're going to grab our weapon range and say sets and then connect it to the value from the table and then on the impact emitter we're going to say loads because it is a soft reference and we're going to cast to its original type so <clears throat> cast to particle system and basically we're going to grab the impact emitter and set it to this value right here okay so if we can pause and save and hit play everything should be okay so we should have the effect and this also should be working and we can also test this uh, on the server so that we can see that everything is working so let's put this on three players play as listen server and if you hit play you will see um when i try to fire everyone can see me the location is precise as you can see everyone can see me and if i try to go on the wall over here you can see that i cannot uh hit that spot and if i can uh move to here i can now hit the location okay so um that's basically it guys this is how you can create some simple traces um i hope you liked it i hope you learned something with it and don't forget to subscribe